you can go anywhere in the world and when you say the word New York City, the subway is part of those phrases or those things that people talk about. There's a million people that pass through the transit system every day, depend on the transit system as their means of transportation. It's a busy city, it's a tough city to get around in. It's the bowels of, of the city. It's exciting and it's dangerous. You certainly can't beat New York City transit when it comes to filming. We have flavor that you cannot capture any other place in this world. Without the subway system, this, the city just comes to a grinding halt. Well, subways uh, are part of everybody's life in New York uh, if you want to get somewhere fast and you want to get there economically. We're the only system in the world that operates 24 hours a day. The only system, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every day they run about 6,000 trains. The amount of trains that's needed to carry these millions of people, several million people in New York City, is tremendous. I don't know what the percentage is, but I would imagine you know, eight out of 10 people rely on the subway. I mean, it's a critical, critical key of getting around this city of transportation, you know, and without it, I think the city could shut down. So it's a, it's a very integral part to the reality of New York City, and obviously it's an integral part to our movie. The subway system is the, the main artery of transportation in New York City. It always has been, even when I was a kid. We never had cars. We lived in communities and everybody lived, you know, next to their relatives and we all took the subway into Manhattan because Manhattan was the focal point of New York culture. It's where all the movies and museums and plays were. And to this day, you find the same thing happening. People that live in a city don't necessarily have cars. And if they do, they choose not to not to drive their cars into Manhattan, and a lot of people still take the subway into Manhattan. Where else in the world can you go from the beginning of the Bronx all the way to Brooklyn, you know, and you can stop in the middle along the way downtown in Manhattan in Queens for two, what, two dollars now? I've grown up on the trains and buses of this city all my life, and until this day, I still get on the train. Matter of fact, just yesterday I was on the train, you know, because it's a quick and easy way to get around. And of course, as an actor, 16 years old, even 15 years old, as I started out in, in Manhattan, we needed to get around quick. So you had an audition on, you know, the east side of New York, and then you had it in the village the next day for an off-Broadway show. And then that, uh, later that day, you had to be back on Madison for a commercial or something. You know, you, you had to get around Manhattan quickly uh, and then back home. So you use the subways a lot. And they were cheap, fast, and uh, crowded often. As a young adult and an adult, I took the two train from 241st Street and White Plains Road. I knew every stop, 221st, 241st, 238th, 225th. I said to myself, <laughs> whenever I got $2 to rub together, I was going to never take the train again because I had to take it. And they said, I hate having to take it. I almost got robbed on the train. I did everything on the train. And now for the last four months, all <laughs> not only have I been in the train, I've been in between stations. Back in the day, I used to sneak on the train all the time, onto the D train and right up to Yankee Stadium when I was a kid. And uh, after the game, walk down one stop from the stadium and sneak on the train there, sneak back. You know, but you're a kid, you get on the train, you ride between cars, you, you sneak down the side, you know, you never went too far. So it was interesting after all these years, 30 years later, whatever it is, to, to, to be on the subway. I mean, I'm, I've been in the subway the last four months. Safety was a huge concern for the MTA and, uh, and always is for us in the film business too. Uh, we work in, in environments that are that you know, the general public doesn't go into. Have a hundred people down there every night, all wanting to be back in bed, not be down stuck in the <laughs> subways in New York in the middle of the night. When you have as many people that this production has down on the tracks, believe me, it is a major challenge. The danger itself is always just you know just being on the tracks, tripping hazards, grease stuff like that that people who are not used to walking down there and sometimes even people that are used to walking down there if they get a little careless something like that can happen where they can slip and fall. The movie basically started off for us going into a track class uh, for 12 hours. You learn about the third rail and how you, at 
any and all costs, you stay away from the third rail and you learn about the little alcoves that you tuck in when the trains are going by and the different safety apparatuses that are along the way if something happens. And you learn about the danger of it and how real it is. It's to teach you how to be safe when you're on that track. It's how to walk safely, how to uh, protect yourself when you're on the tracks. At first you kind of thought, well, you know, do I really need eight hours worth of education on subways? But when you look at the tragedies that have happened uh, in the subways of New York uh, with workers, you get the idea that well, maybe there is something I should pay attention to. Tony had been uh, working and flew in uh, on a night on a red eye flight and came straight to the class, and so it was a big challenge for him. Uh, we had to all help him stay awake. I fell asleep numerous times. I failed the class. It was a lot of information and then they took the whole class onto the tracks with these safety vests and flashlights and helmets and, and all this stuff and we went down uh, and had to do what they call clearing up which is there's a train coming by you have to stand in an area that's got enough clearance that you don't get hit by the train as it comes by. Nowadays the brand new trains are so quiet that you can be out there and the train will be up on you without you even knowing it. Even them going by at like 10 miles an hour there's something a, a little scary about it. So they put me between two trains, one going 40 miles that way, one going 40 miles out this way. They're standing in this little arch tunnel. It's weird, it's very claustrophobic. Those trains going at that speed, and you've only got maybe a foot either side of you with these trains blasting. You don't realize how big they are because on the platform you're raised up, whatever it is, six, eight feet, so you're raised up to the door level. But when you're on the tracks, you're down here. They're monsters. And then rolling 40, 50 miles an hour, the wind, you know, can move you around. I mean, you got to brace yourself. It was dangerous, you know. You step the wrong way, you get hit by a train, and you touch the third rail and you're over, you know. We learned how to work down on the tracks with the live third rail. The third rail is always your, your biggest nemesis down there. You know, you always have to treat the third rail like it's always on. You never take it for granted that it's off. The third rail supplies 600 volts of DC power. It energizes the train. You got 600 volts of direct current running through that third rail, and in a rush hour, the amperage is up to about 10,000 amps. The more we worked in there, the more aware I got, because I could see what was happening. People start getting relaxed, you know, and they showed us a photograph of what happens if you hit that third rail, and, and uh, it ain't nice. There's different operations to remove power, depending on where you go. It's all related to safety and communication. Nobody can enter the tracks until it's confirmed that the power is off and secured. We take a lot of safety precautions. We don't take any chances. You learn to respect the rail. What I mean by respect is uh, always treat it alive, whether it's de-energized or energizes. Always treat the rail as if it's alive. You'll never get hurt. You know, people are just stepping over it, and uh, I'm like, I assumed the whole time that all rails were alive. So that's the way I operated. Walking in a subway tunnel with lights behind your back or in front of you, there's a lot of shadow effect, there is a lot of tripping hazards down there. You have to be cognizant of your location and your position and you just can't step out without looking as to where you're going. It's a dangerous place to be in. It's so loud and noisy, you can actually get lost down there and suddenly you lose orientation and you don't know where you are. And so the MTA have been very, very cautious about how we work down there. It's so easy to get hurt down there. You know, if, if you're tired, you I say you step the wrong way, you're not you're not paying attention. But the, all the guys that ran the show down there, the MTA guys, we had you know, people watching and people warning. I think we track trained about 300 people for this movie. That was a challenge in itself. I think at the end of the day, I was kind of glad because um, I felt more confident being under there and maybe naivete or lack of, of, of knowledge would have uh, hurt me if I didn't because I was running around the subways more than anybody else was, literally. <laughs> Whenever I could, I pushed the chute in the subway. Ah! Pelham 123 has been in this system more than any other film has been in the system. I believe that we have given this production company more than we've ever given any other production company. Of course, our main function is to move people. And we really can't inconvenience the people by taking large segments of track out of service. So what we have to do is we have to find areas where the production company is going to be comfortable in getting their shots and accomplishing their task. On our very first scout, we went um, to look at 
tunnels that they had available uh, for us to shoot in in Brooklyn on a four track system where they were going to give us a couple tracks at night. Uh, there was also a, um, a yard uh, below ground there where there was uh, different sections of track that we could use for sequences as well. We shot at Hoyt Street of course. Uh, we're shooting at Church Avenue on the express tracks which are nominally used they're not you know it's not a major thoroughfare for trains so we're able to occupy those tracks uh, at night which gives us a little flexibility and gives them a little uh, variety as to some of the shots they could set up there was a tunnel one of the subway spurs that came up under the waldorf astoria and it was used by uh, among others by president roosevelt and of course, you know, he wasn't as mobile as some of the other presidents because of, uh, of, of his polio back then, you know. So there was a spur that was built underneath the Waldorf Astoria Hotel so when the president was visiting, he could be whisked, whisked down Park Avenue or under Park Avenue, under the New York Central, on the New York Central to the Roosevelt Spur and whisked back out of town in the same way. And we got very close to it. We got to the doors. We were never allowed into the tunnel itself because I believe it's still uh, uh, being used. We have used tracks this time that we've never used before. And they're the tracks that lead into the Transit Museum. The museum is fed with 600 volts of uh, DC current from the third rail. And uh, to have the museum energized on a daily basis and also how the film company it wasn't possible so third rail had to divert a 900 foot jumper cable to the adjacent track to accommodate the museum and also to accommodate the movie production company that was a big project getting the cars in and out of the museum in order to do the shot because those cars are usually the non-operating cars we're using new technology trains. We're using cars from the IRT R142s and cars from the uh, B Vision R160s, plus a single R62A from the number seven line, which they've dressed up to look like an R142. They wanted to use a single car for this whole thing, sort of like the original movie. Uh, we don't have any except in the Flushing line. That's the only place we have a single car. The MTA very, very kindly allowed us to use that single car because it's the only train that will run as a single car on the track. Um, they allowed us to, to, to basically build our own train inside and put a, a, a whole exterior on the outside of that train, which I don't think has ever been done before here. So the, we had to take one car, and get it designated for the movie, and in turn they had to transfer that car from the Flushing Line to 207th Street where car equipment uh, took, gutted the train, gutted the car, and then the movie company came in and they uh, refurbished the car to make it look like the new equipment because that's what uh, Tony Scott wanted to, I guess, enhance was the new equipment. And we couldn't give him the single car with the new equipment, so this was the next best thing. We usually don't run those cars around by themselves. To run that from Ocean Parkway to uh, West 8th Street or almost to Stillwell Avenue by itself was uh, kind of uh, interesting. The MTA were fantastic. They let us do things that they had never done before. So they gave us real trains to play with. They gave us live four track systems. The local trains running back on the outside tracks and we owned the two center tracks. In this particular movie, there were so many countless meetings on making sure we had the right equipment available for the crew to use, the right locations, the right amount of flagmen that were needed to protect everybody. Because don't forget, we do have the trains are running in and around us. You couldn't do this movie without their commitment to wanting to do the movie. It's a huge undertaking. It's a, it takes a lot of their resources, obviously. The people that we've met along the way have just been fantastic. They really, they all remember the old movie, the Walter Matthau version. And now with Tony and his work being known for the excitement it brings, they've also become excited about being a part of the movie. It seemed like everybody was just. Uh, out in front about helping. They all, everybody wanted to lend a hand in this movie. They just, it just felt like everybody wanted to be a part of it. I know that I was the one that said, if you bring this film here, and I meant that, if you bring this film here, we will give you almost everything you want. And we have given them everything that they have asked for. We have not, we've said no, but it's let's find a way to make this work. We've always come to a happy medium. The MTA workers are great, great workers, and they know what they're doing. And 
they have the last word ultimately. I respect the people that work down there. The hell of a job that they have to, to maintain uh, a system like that and, uh, and, uh, and to be safe. It was logistically very hard, you know, and, but the MTA who became the, the Pelham family, they were great, we got our, our, our core group in there and they're all fantastic. They gave me everything and more than given any other film that's ever shot there.